Good morning, everybody. Uh, my guess is that three quarters of the people in this room will live in cities. My guess is that 100% of the people in this room will have some ideas in terms of how to make improvements or have some, um, some issues in cities. So what I'd like to do is to talk about um, exactly that. So how can you bring digital infrastructures into cities to transform the quality of outcomes and the quality of services? I'd like to do that in, in three ways. One is to talk about the context. Uh, quite often we sit down in our daily business and we forget uh, really what's important in life. So I'd like to just give you a few pictures around some context and then move from there to things which are about enabling city improvements, which will also touch on a very important European initiative that's going at the moment, and then pick up on two or three specific ideas. So the first and fairly obvious thing is that though there are uh, places that you live um, and it's very easy to get up in the morning and uh, focus on just your place, we're actually living in a very connected world. Cities compete with other cities around the world. Um, this slide shows road networks, shipping networks, air networks. Everything is connected. The economy is connected. So what goes on in one small place actually is implicated across multiple cities. This uh, is a picture of a building which was built recently in China. Um, it took three months Sorry, it took 15 days to build 30 floors. Now, imagine what we could do in Europe if we did that. Do we, what's happening in China, in essence, is that they are accelerating the consumption of scarce resources. Now, I thought this was very clever when I first saw it and thought, that's great. Imagine what the Chinese can do. And then I really thought, hang on a second, all of that concrete and steel and other things, they're using the old model and they're just consuming resources that much faster. At the moment, they're building a building which will be the highest building in the world, around about a kilometer high, and they were arguing whether it was going to take three months or six months. So this is industrialization at a scale that we've never seen ever before. So is doing things faster actually very helpful? I take the tube every morning in London, and uh, I was intrigued by this particular picture that said, in the future, transport networks will think for themselves. And I thought that actually could be very helpful in order for me to get from my home to the office. I was also intrigued by the logo at the bottom of the slide, which is a bank. And I thought, why would banks get involved in this? Well, infrastructure costs a lot of money. So banks need to think about doing things differently. The message here is that industry of all different forms are starting to actually understand what cities are. They're not there yet but it's important that they start to understand what cities are because to change a city is a non-trivial matter. So we need to be smarter in terms of what we do. We need to figure out how to uh, change the way the Chinese will be building buildings. This slide um, sets the context in terms of probably most of the people in this room. Um, the population of the world will treble in our lifetimes. A trebling of population in any other organism in one lifetime is typically called a plague. And generally, you get rid of the organism. So what are we going to do about this particular problem? If we triple the population of the world in one lifetime, it affects every system. Back to the beginning, the first slide that I showed that showed the interconnected world that we live in, all of these systems are affected by one thing, which is an awful lot of human beings. And it's actually our choice to do something about that, because most of the people in this room are executors, policy setters, and such like. I guess the question is, so what can we do? So let's move from the compelling context to how we view cities. Um, the term smart cities has appeared in various different places. Lots of people decide that they can define what that means. Some of the words from learned bodies like the European Commission, Gartner, the analysts, the UK Department of Business and Innovation, loads and loads of definitions of smart cities. The, the interesting thing is not to argue about the meaning of words, but actually to say what is it that's coming out of these various different meanings. Some of the common themes that come out in terms of governance, openness, collaboration, customer centricity. These are some of the important leadership philosophies, if you like, that are being applied. Then if you look at the processes, about learning, about integration across the sectors, about agility in terms of how we move, in terms of systems thinking, 
the focus on some of the words that look towards why we are actually focusing on outcomes in terms of resilience, sustainability, livability, which is obviously the most important. And all of those words being applied to the various different city systems that we live in. So the message here, smart cities, the application of technology to help transform cities is important. There are a set of common themes in terms of definitions and we've shifted from what was a technology theme 10 years ago to something which is more sophisticated, more comprehensive and it applies to every city system. Uh, this is an intriguing slide in that basically what it says is let's look at cities in the same way that we look at ourselves. We consist of skin, bones, organs, all sorts of tubes inside us. And you can actually describe a city in that same systemic sense. Now, if I was to hold up an aspirin, then you'd probably know what it did. We tend to focus on the differences, not focus on the similarities. If we focused on the similarities, we could come up with common solutions. What's the aspirin for cities? Perhaps a slightly simplistic metaphor, but that's in essence what this work does. This is some work by something called the City Protocol Society, which is to try and describe cities as systems. If we describe cities as systems, we can compare city to city. We can also understand the different contexts of cities, whether they're by the sea, or whether they're in amongst hills, whether they're in flat ground. We can look at the, the physical infrastructure that's been built there in terms of buildings and such like, and we can look at the information systems that support that. So that systems thinking, I think, is new and is very important in terms of how we understand how we can transform cities. A slightly more simple version of that is to look at something I, I like to call the egg diagram that looks at the various different domains of cities from the left-hand side of the diagram in terms of where we are, our houses, our homes, our work, so the physical nature of buildings, to the utility systems to support them, to some of the services that support that. That's how we can constitute a city, but importantly, the things that hang around that that typically are broken, and I would ask you perhaps for those 75% that live in cities, do you feel in your cities that you have sustained collaborative leadership in place to actually govern the city? I don't mean the mayor, if there is one. I mean a leadership network that will sustain in terms of taking your city towards a future which is different to the way it was before. Do you feel that your city actually understands you as an individual in terms of the context? Do they have deep understanding of you in, in context? and other use in digitization. So though the center of the diagram is about the systems of cities, the important aspects are about how we lead them, how we understand society within the cities. And both of those two things, I, I don't think I can name one city in the world that is leading practice on either of the two. And where are they using digitization to transform? Now an important other piece of context is about information. In the last three years or so, we've collected more data than we've collected in the whole history of humankind since we became social. That's an awful lot. It would be sheer coincidence if we understood how to manage that properly. So in terms of context, information is genuinely, or data is genuinely, a vast and growing pool. We talk about open data. I would suggest that that's a very small portion currently of what we really need to consider. There are five on this slide, five different data pools that exist. And we need to understand not just what each of them are and the various different behaviors of them, the issues that surround them in terms of security or not, but we need to actually understand how we're going to integrate all of those five to actually transform outcomes. So open data is not just the answer in terms of what we need to focus on. The, 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 the challenge is to figure out how we can take data from these five different sources, all of which are either increasing or decreasing, to actually change outcomes. To something which has just got started, um, last year the European Commission launched something called the Smart Cities and Community Strategy. In uh, mid-October, uh, 12 chief executives from industry, five commissioners, which is rare to get five commissioners in the room, and eight mayors got together to bless something which was called the strategic implementation plan for that. And that's now moving to the operational plan. Um, there's a discussion earlier about OPUS, the, uh, the funding system from the commission. 
um, a lot of money, ju not just commission money, but actually industry investment and institutional funders investment will go to scaling up and accelerating the delivery of common solutions in cities through collaboration. So there's a new initiative, it's currently focused on energy, on urban transport and on interconnected infrastructures. So it's focused on those three domains, if you like, but it starts to pick up some of those horizontal topics in terms of a lot of the important enabling aspects. This is the basis by which we can focus on the similarities of cities and come up with common solutions, information enabled solutions for our cities in Europe. Industry will not be interested in individual cities. Banks are not interested in investing in individual cities. They're too small, they're too unique. They're like individuals, you, trying to argue about how special you are in comparison to the person that's sitting next to you. Remember the aspirin, focus on the similarities. This process, I hope, will actually help to transform the pace at which uh, our European cities evolve. Finally, three brief examples. Um, one is on public assets. I, I have no idea the value of the public assets in the city I live in, which is in London. I guessed the other day it might be somewhere between 100 and 150 billion pounds. Somebody said that's wrong by probably a factor of four or five. It's a lot larger. The point is there's an enormous amount of physical assets that cities own, public assets that cities own. Those assets are old, they're rusty, they leak pipes that deliver water or not in London. So they're aging. But if we install new ones, then let's make sure those new ones are smart. Um, so in terms of bringing a knowledge of those assets, the value of those assets, the cost of delivery and management of those assets, and what we can do to improve them through using digital technologies, smart meters in, uh, in, electrical, in uh, utility systems and such like, these are vital opportunities. And what's going on at the moment is to say, let's look at leading practice solutions which are rented. So you take away the investment requirements. And it's on the cloud. These are things that the European initiative could implement to grasp and get a hold of that vast quantity of assets. This is a little story up in Sweden of, that deals with, with uh, health and well-being of the elderly. Now, social services and healthcare as two professional public sector bodies represent round about 60% of the cost of care of the elderly. And we all know that the elderly is a growing population. 60% of the resources that deliver care are actually in the third sector, voluntary workers. So how can you engage those voluntary workers to contribute to the delivery of care of the elderly people? A simple thing, the grit in the oyster that causes the jewel to be formed. Um, there's a little application, again, on the cloud, digital infrastructure. A little application on the cloud, which is on a device, which those two public sector communities that never collaborate, social care and health care, can access. They can both access information on a simple device. So too can the voluntary workers access that, and it does two very simple things. It provides a menu of care as directed by the individual elderly person. It's in a communication it's a menu of care which may change over time, and it schedules that care. So very, very simple means to transform the lack of collaboration between two public sector units and the integration of the voluntary sector into that. These are some very cheap ways that you can cause transformation to happen. It's on the cloud. It's rented. And the third is actually a little bit closer to home. The European Commission of Funding um, e-service platforms in Slovakia, uh, and at the moment we're involved in one of those, in Batskabiska, and I can never say that properly, I apologize for that for those of you who live there, or even knew it. Um, but this is an important aspect of trying to actually understand the commonality, back to the diagram of the City Protocol Society. What is similar in terms of services, and how can you actually put a lot of the common enabling technologies in place to actually drive towards better quality services? The disappointment is that the different regions are coming up with different platforms. The opportunity is to integrate those together and to move it again towards the cloud to cause them to be similar platforms. 
So my message behind here is these are real things that are happening that are making services twice as good in half the time for half as much. And we need to do that given the context that I was talking about. Uh, and then finally, um, the message here is everybody needs to change. Cities need to change what they're doing. Governments need to change what they're doing. Industry needs to change what they're doing, and society too. So focus on the similarities, not the differences, and um, let's address the compelling context that's out there through our cities. Thank you very much indeed.